Hi everyone, you're probably watching this video because you're wondering why gaming laptop batteries suck and they don't last long at all. Maybe you're thinking about buying a gaming laptop and you are completely shocked at how low the battery life is on the laptops that you're looking at. Maybe you have a gaming laptop already and you're trying to figure out why your battery life is so low compared to laptops you've used in the past. The quick answer to this question is gaming laptops have more powerful components that are designed to give you more powerful computing. It's as simple as that. Bigger processors with more cores clocked at a higher speed. Uh, you are probably going to have a discrete GPU graphics card in the laptop instead of one that's integrated onto the CPU. So that uh, discrete graphics card is going to pull its own power from the board and basically the between the processor and the GPU you're going to be pulling a lot more power out of the battery than you would in a normal laptop that has an integrated graphics solution or an APU and generally speaking you're going to be using way more power in a gaming laptop in your normal computing activities and also think about the fact that you bought the gaming laptop for gaming so you're probably going to be gaming for long periods of time and when you game you're going to be putting a lot of load onto both the processor and the GPU in your system. So you've got more powerful components that have a higher power draw and you're putting more load on those components by gaming all the time or basically just using your computer the way you wanted to use it. So in this video, we're going to take two laptops and compare the components that they have inside and we're going to look and see how much power those components are rated to use so we can see how two different laptops could use drastically different amounts of power. Stick around to the end because I'll show you how to create a power plan on your laptop to help save a little bit of battery life in your gaming laptop though. So the first thing I want to talk about is how laptop battery capacity is marketed. Now if you've been shopping for a laptop or you've recently shopped or done a lot of research on them, you normally see the laptop's battery performance marketed as battery hours and usually they'll say that it's rated for a certain amount of hours with mixed use or normal use or whatever it is or maybe they give you some kind of a benchmark or maybe it's watching video on YouTube, browsing the internet, whatever it is. They'll give you an estimated battery life based on normal use of the laptop. Typically you'll see this marketed very strongly in laptops where battery life is a core feature. You know, your more mainstream laptops, your businessy laptops, they're going to really put an emphasis on that extra battery life because they know that their users are taking their laptops on the go and may need to use that battery life as long as possible. Now, on gaming laptops, you don't normally see battery life advertised. In fact, normally it's pretty well uh, non-existent from the marketing of the gaming laptop because they know that it's horrible. You may see them advertise at less than an hour or two hours for the battery rating on these gaming laptops under normal use or when gaming they may advertise it. So that's the big difference. Um, whereas a mainstream laptop, you could actually see five, ten or more hours advertised. All right, so let's jump into a couple of uh, laptops here to compare. All right, so I just did a quick search on Best Buy to find some laptops for us to look at today. The first one I chose is an HP 15.6 inch touchscreen laptop. There's no specific model number. This is about as generic as you can get. It has an Intel Core i5, 12 gigabytes of RAM, a 256 gigabyte uh, solid state drive, and a touchscreen, okay? The second one we're gonna take a look at is the Alienware M15 R3 15.6 inch gaming laptop. This beast has an Intel Core i7, 16 gigabytes of memory. It has an RTX 2070 Super, a 512 gigabyte solid state drive, and a 1080p monitor with a whopping 300 hertz refresh rate. So basically this sucker is meant for gaming, okay? There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So the first thing I want to point out, on the first laptop, if you scroll down to the actual specifications of the laptop, you'll see that the processor is listed as an i5-1035G1. And if you check out that processor on Intel's specifications page, you'll see that that particular processor carries a TDP of 15 watts. And the TDP is the thermal design power, and that represents the average power in watts the processor will dissipate when operating at base frequency when all cores active under an Intel-defined high-complexity workload. Basically, it's how many watts the processor is gonna pull under normal use. So this particular processor here will pull 15 watts. 
And this particular laptop does not have a discrete graphics card. In fact, it has Intel UHD ultra high definition graphics integrated, right? So basically just an integrated graphics solution. You're not gonna be playing many games on this thing. So basically between the processor and the GPU, you've got 15 watts of TDP. Now, obviously there's other things, there's the screen and the mouse and all that, but for all intents and purposes, the most power hungry components of your laptop are the CPU and the GPU. Now on the Alienware, we're gonna scroll down and we'll see that the processor listed is the i7-10750H. And if you look at AT, uh, AT and and if you look at Intel specification sheet, you'll see that this particular processor has a TDP of 45 watts. So we're already triple the power of our mainstream laptop with just the CPU of this particular gaming laptop. But this gaming laptop also has a discrete graphics card and that's the RTX 2070 Super and this is the mobile version, okay? So we'll scroll right here and see, it's a discrete graphics card, you can see it right here. Now, if we take a look at the specifications for the uh, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Mobile Super Mobile, say that five times fast, you're gonna see that the board design lists a 115 watt TDP just for this discrete GPU. So now we have 115 watts for the GPU and we have 45 watts for the CPU, which equals which equals 160 watts of power compared to the 15 watts of the mainstream laptop. So you can see right away that the gaming laptop is gonna pull a lot more power through the battery or through the wall adapter if it's plugged in. All right, so now let's take a look inside the laptop settings and we can do something to limit the amount of power that your laptop is using and you can squeak a little bit more time out of your gaming laptop's performance. Now, this particular laptop is not a gaming laptop. It does not have a discrete GPU, but these settings are gonna be the same in any Windows 10 laptop and you can create a power plan based on the system that you have and your needs. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the search bar and type power plan. And the first option that comes up is choose a power plan. We'll go in here in the control panel. You can also just go to the control panel and navigate to the power settings area. Once this loads up, you're gonna see that you can choose or customize a power plan. Now by default, Windows 10 typically has one power plan created and it is the balanced, which is recommended. But what you can do is look at the plan settings here and typically this is gonna have options for you to, you know, when you turn off the display and when you put the computer to sleep. If you go into the advanced power settings, however, you have a few more options. For instance, you can change the processor power management and if you have AMD or Nvidia graphics, you can actually change the power play settings on those particular things as well. Now, because this is on the balance setting, I'm actually gonna do something else because I don't wanna change the settings on my only power plan. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna to choose to create a power plan. Once you get to this screen, you can see there are a couple more options. There's a power saver and there's a high performance. Now, if you're on a gaming laptop, you actually might want to create two profiles, one high performance for your gaming when you're plugged in, and one for power saver when you're unplugged and really need to squeak out as much battery as you can. In this case, I'm gonna choose power saver, and I'm gonna change my name to battery saver. Hit next, and you'll be able to configure this power plan just like we were looking at the other ones. I'm not gonna mess with these screen settings here. I'm gonna go ahead and create it. That's not really what we're looking for. You can see it actually dimmed my screen because by default, the battery saver um, power plan does do a few things to limit your battery life, such as having a maximum on your screen brightness and limiting your PC um, and limiting your CPU power state as well. So once I'm in this, I'm gonna go ahead and go to uh, change plan settings and I'm gonna go to advanced power settings what I'm most interested in is the processor power management. So I'm gonna open that up. So I'm gonna look at the minimum processor state. On battery, it's 5% and plugged in, it's 5%, that's fine. But I'm gonna to go to maximum processor state and see what it says. So on battery, it's listed at 100% and plugged in, it's listed at 100%. What we can do is we can actually click on the minimum, or excuse me, the maximum power state on battery, and we can change that to 50% or even lower, but I would recommend starting at 50%. Next, we can go down to the 
Next, we can go down to the AMD graphics power settings, AMD power play settings, and on and in this menu, you'll see that you have on battery and plugged in. And because we've selected the power saver battery plan, by default, it's going to have optimized battery um, as the setting here. So between setting up the power saving power plan and lowering your maximum CPU state to 50% and making sure that your AMD or Nvidia power play settings are set to optimize battery, you're going to be able to squeeze a little more performance out of your battery and you're going to be able to use your laptop a little bit longer when it's not plugged in. This is not going to cure the problem of a gaming laptop using a lot more battery than a standard laptop will. It's still pulling more power and there's not as much you can do about that, but these settings will go a long way to helping mitigate some of that excess battery drain. Now, don't forget when you when it comes time to do some gaming or some uh, more serious uh, computing on your laptop, you're gonna wanna go back into that power plan setting and change it to balanced or high performance so that your processor and GPU are gonna go back up to that high performance state. But you know, if you play a little bit, if you play around a little bit in even the power saving state, you can make sure that when your laptop is plugged in, you're still gonna get a decent amount of performance. So it's up to you and how much time you wanna spend going back and forth. But these are some ways that you can get more battery out of your gaming laptop. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully it was helpful for you. If you found value, please smash that like button and help me out with this video and the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. It would also help me out a lot. If you have any questions that were not addressed in this video, be sure to drop a comment below and I will personally answer it and maybe even make a video about that question at a later date. Thanks.